thought uh, it might be useful to uh, talk about accuracy comparisons. We are often concerned with accuracy. And I really was impressed with a chart that I ran across. And I got the reference because I don't remember. So when I get to the slide, I'll we'll know. But uh, it had to do with um, a voltage reference. Now, in electronics, a voltage reference is a specially designed integrated circuit that is uh, having a specific voltage. And then I give you, you know, a plus or minus tolerance on that voltage. And voltage references are very important, especially for a meter. You want to measure something, you measure it by volts. How do you know it's by volts? Well, inside the instrument is a standard voltage reference that it uses for giving you the correct answers. And of course, anything to do with analog to digital converters, critical and accurate voltage reference. So how is this specified? <clears throat> and I ran across a, a table uh, in, uh, I forget the, the, the company that manufactures, there's only about three, TI is a big one, that manufactures voltage references. What do they mean? Let's imagine that we have a, uh, a digital meter display, and I'm going to use LCD rather than, you know, LED. And uh, we have three seven-segment <coughs> digits. And of course, each of these are, you know, the uh, segment. And, and here's a good example of a, of a multimeter. This is my favorite meter uh, here. It's made by a Chinese company. Um, it's A-N-E-N-G. And uh, the model number is A-N-8009. It's a $25 meter. But it is a, an, an, an absolutely astounding for its accuracy, uh, its range of, of, of values. For example, on, on the resistance, you can measure up to 100 mega ohms, so forth. Wow. And uh, uh, this is a four-digit display, in contrast with what I'm going to talk about here, a three-digit display. And we'll see what that means in a minute. So we have three seven-segment digits. It's a floating point. I guess we now know what all about floating point. And it has a plurality sign if it's negative. And here's an example of, of what it might look like. Now, how is this specified? Well, we say, oh, it's three digits. That's obvious. Uh, the number of counts is 999, or you might round it to 1,000, 1,000 count display or meter. Or we could look at what it might do in terms of its resolution, and it would be a 0.1% resolution capability. You can express that also as parts per million, so that 0.1% uh, or that 999 counts would be the equivalent of 1,000 parts per million. Now, you notice we, we're using different terms and, and we're specifying the same thing, but using it, expressing it differently. What determines number of digits? Well, all of the normal specifications of a display, the type of the display, the size, the cost, power consumption is very important. As we know, LCD gets longer battery life than LED. Speed of response up to a point. Because if district of change is so fast, you don't need to go any faster unless you're doing something electronic with it elsewhere. But for a human being looking at the display, three or four uh, um, samples per second is about all you, uh, all you can visually interpolate. And an analog displays give a little bit of advantage in that regard. Uh, 
that's a different subject. But the critical uh, aspect here is the analog to digital conversion. And of course, uh, what we're doing, uh, when we do analog conversion, we've got a, you know, a curve here, and we sample it across at a certain rate and, and get uh, discrete values, and that's the digital uh, result. And then the number of bits that you used determines your resolution. Now, a, a three-digit display, 999, requires 10 bits because 10 bits gives you a count of 1,094 and we're only going to 999. So why not use a four-digit display? If, if we've got a 10-bit a ADD converter in our instrument, why not we get four digits? Well, they do. But if we can use the least significant a bit, just a one, we're covered. Most significant. <laughs> so in the early days, not so much today, but in the early days, Every one of these digits was very expensive. So even though this is only showing these two segments either on or off, and these are showing all different combinations of on or off, it was still a lower cost display than having four real digits. In other words, having this digit over here, most of it with uh, the same as this one over here or over here. And that, and that actually requires 11 bits, by the way. To go to 1999. Uh, from a real world perspective, yes, you can't. Uh, you know, you, no, when no, you say uh, three and a half digit multimeters, always use at least 11 bits. I'm not disputing that, but theoretically, all you need is this. No, because 10 bits can only get you to 102.4. It has to be 11 bits. Oh, you're saying for for one nine 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 nine? Yes, yeah. yes, correct. that's correct. Yeah. Correct. So marketing, and part of this whole discussion is uh, theoretical versus real world. And what triggered me in getting interested in this um, was the fact that uh, the technical author of this application note on voltage reference integrated circuits made the comment of, of, of the various ways this is described. So how is this specified? In theory, number of digits three and a half, number maximum of counts 1999, percentage of resolution 3.05%, uh, 5, 5, uh, 500 parts per million, all of these are saying the same thing. And which of these are better? Specifications, especially those for accuracy, are critical. Marketing wants the meter to look its best. More is usually better. Three and a half is more than three. Although it's a marketing lie, because going to 1999 is actually only 3.3 digits. It's not three and a half. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, <laughs> That's too complex. Okay, we'll talk about digits. <laughs> Uh, 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 it's coming out of the picture. This idea of half a digit is pure nonsense. Okay, <laughs> absolutely pure nonsense. But manufacturers, the marketing the, the people of manufacturing, yeah. yeah. it has no application in marketing. Yeah, that's right. And somehow, uh, and I, I've got a slide on this. Um, there's. Uh, Three and a half digits, there's three and three quarters digits, there's three, I mean, every fraction you can imagine, which is meaningless. Um, so, anyway, we'll get to the second here. The same value may be expressed differently. Which value is the best to use for selling and, and competing? Which value is used by the potential customer? For meters, seven values are used. 
the number of counts, dB for decibels, bits, percent, powers of 10, parts per million, and display digits, uh, but you know, there's no standards in that. And this is what prompted all of this thought and discussion. This chart right here. Now this is my modified version. So oh, you I do like sliding rules. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I don't have the, the notation there. It's in, in uh, there's much more detail in the actual paper version of this presentation. So up at the top, there's counts, there's dB, there's bits, digital percent, uh, parts per hundred, uh, powers of ten, parts per million, and digital meter digits. So there's a half, you know, all the way down here. And in terms of uh, state of the art, we'll be simple and just talk about voltmeters. The state of the art is really eight and a half digits. And of course, HP was very prominent in providing these very expensive bench uh, top a few uh, the meters, and over well over ten thousand dollars. And then this meter right here uh, fits right here. Okay. And uh, if you convert that, uh, let's go to three and a half bits. Uh, um, Eric was you know right here. It's it's. 11 bits, okay, um, it's uh, 500 parts per million, and uh, the count will be 2048. A, a true four-digit meter, because you'll, you'll get uh, uh, ads from these uh, MPJA, uh, anybody buy from them, you know, uh, computer uh, specialists, uh, all electronics, these are all companies, and they have their write-ups and so forth. And, and they will often say, a four-digit meter. Oh, but it has a 6,000 count. 6,000? 6, 6,000. Okay, so where's our counts? Our counts are over here. Um, this is 2,000. Here's 8,000. So 4,000. So it's somewhere in here, okay, in terms of, of counts. And that's why. why 9,999? If it has four digits. Oh, correct. That's why this meter is so uh, special, so unusual. This is a true four-digit meter. It's 9,999. 9, you can get that on the display. It's a true four-digit meter. Here's a, here's a four-digit. That's this. That's what, that's what this particular machine. Um, it's 100 parts per million resolution, uh, powers of 10, and of course we're talking about small numbers, so it's negative on, on the power, powers of 10. 0.01% uh, and over here, uh, in terms of counts, it's going to be 9,999. Now the difference between 3.5 digits and 8.5 digits is a lot of money. Okay. Richard, go back one slide for a second. Sure. See the bottom where it says no standards exist or followed? Yes. That's the one that the marketing people always use? <laughs> right. <laughs> because there are no standards and they can't be held to account. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's not just in multimeters that this is first? Absolutely. Absolutely. But um, I just thought this particular chart or table was so useful because um, you, you, it compares it in a visual way and it gives you a whole perspective. Now let's go forward uh, here. Oops. Uh, the graphic shows how accurate specifications relate. The method will depend on the purpose. Um, our chemists may think of parts per million, uh, they work in parts per million a lot. Marketing has its own requirements. The customers have their own experience and their own field of application. Salespeople will mix them for his or her advantage to confuse the customer. And the graphic is close, but 
not to three plus digits accurate. What, I, what I'm saying here is uh, if you wanted to get some, you know, some particular value here and you wanted all the other values here, well, that is in part the purpose of this presentation because I have 30 programs that given any one of those, it will convert to the others. Here's an example. Uh, the method, that's a zero because that's the input. And uh, uh, if you want to, uh, uh, if you're given a certain uh, number of counts, because this table up here, this, if counts are known, then you, that becomes the input. And, and this is the uh, method of representing the accuracy specification. And then, so percent would be your counts divided by 100. There's a 48 program to do that. And uh, uh, if you have 1,000 input, as the input 1,000 counts, uh, it would be 0.10%. And the powers of 10 is minus the log of counts, and there's a 48 program here, and that would be minus 3 dB or minus 3 as an exponent per power of 10. Uh, parts per million, decibels, bits, and, and what I did do is include an all so that um, rather than use here's the input and here's what I want, you can say my input is counts, calculate all the other specifications automatically. What yeah, it, it's, it's nice on these, uh, on these A to D converters if, if you have monotonicity, that is, you anytime you increase the voltage, then you increase the count. But sometimes, it, sometimes in these instruments, you increase the voltage a little bit, the count actually might might drop down because the the individual voltage references in the, in the individual bitwise uh, 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 comparators uh, are are not exactly right on. Well, this is just a concept thing in terms of implementing into specific uh, instruments. Thing. There's a whole lot more to do, as, as Eric pointed out, in terms of um, a number of bits. If you could look at the chart, uh, you need to go probably one more bit because um, just the way the A to D converter circuitry works, you, you, and there's noise, there's a whole bunch of other factors. Uh, this is this is actual thing on there, and this is what triggered it. Why are these various methods used? Linear technology was a company I couldn't think of, and their application no number 82, 1999, contained this table, uh, and I just enhanced it a bit, uh, adding the uh, 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 lines and other things. Um, describes the reason this this way, to keep you from reaching a full understanding of the topic, voltage references. Industry pundits use a special technique called unit hopping to confuse and confound everyone from newcomer to seasoned veteran. You mention an accuracy figure and the pundit quickly hops to a new unit that you cannot follow his line of reason. That's a quote. While this is a good example of human nature, that's my writing, um, influencing technical expression, there is also another reason. Each method has its practical implications slash environment. The digital engineer may think in terms of bits. The marketing professional may best uh, express competitive actions as a number of display digits. When, you, when very small values are involved, the use of parts per million is simply more practical. Which value makes the most sense from figure one? These values are calculated using the equations and programs in the table two. Decimal bits or decimal powers of 10 may not be very meaningful in the content of specified accuracy. So as an example of the, uh, um, if you have uh, 262,000 counts, it's equal to this many decimals down, uh, 18 bits, uh, triple zero four percent, minus power power of a 10, 
uh, four parts per million and five and a half digits on a digital uh -huh. motion meter. Richard. Yes, uh, the marketing people, of course, love to quote this number because this is based on the idea that the, that the voltage you're measuring is going to be full scale. But usually the voltage you're measuring is a much, a much smaller fraction of full scale. So, so the, parts per, the parts per million of your measurement is actually much higher. Yes. The percentage error and everything else. And um, because of scale the trigonometric deck, if you assume that number is exactly 0 .00, uh, these values now come out to, and, and you may not need these to two decimal places, and I'm, I'm only claiming that the, the program in there and the chart thinks what the relative accuracy is. So, the details are in the proceedings. The six menu programs in figure two each have a variation of the all program. In other words, if you want, if you know your, 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 your number of counts and you run the all program, it calls all the programs and displays on the stack all the other values. And here's an example of, of the program itself. Counts up, uh, percentage, power, uh, and so forth. And then uh, the, the all, which would be seventh, is on a second screen. And uh, uh, this, all of this stuff is in, in the uh, uh, proceeding itself. Any questions? Now, Brian, what are your questions? No. No question? Well, why don't you just ask the Hewlett Packard salesman? <laughs> oh, oh, wait, there aren't any more. <laughs> well, actually, the Hewlett Packard salesman says you better incorporate PPC. And the reason that came down was we placed the order for the PPC ROM, and I took, I gave the Hewlett Packard salesman a check for an unnumbered check for $17,000 to pay for the initial ROM mask for the PPC ROM. He looked at this and, and, and he just looked at me like, <laughs> in fact, he took it into the office and they all got a big joke out of it. <laughs> and then they took it to the bank and it, it cashed. <laughs> oh my God. 